In this tutorial, you're going to design in 3CAD, FreeCAD a card box, something that you can store your playing cards in or your Pokemon cards, Magic the Gathering cards, whatever you happen to uh, collect. Uh, but also, it's going to be an introduction into the draft workbench, and we're going to work in the draft workbench specifically with strings and how you can put uh, text on the things you create. To get started, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to find the free cat on the desktop and either double click on it or right click on it and say execute. At the beginning of this, you're going to have to ask your instructor for a caliper, one of these things, and a deck of cards because that's what we're going to make the box to fit. Um, also, if you happen to collect Pokemon cards, the instructions given here will work for that as well. When FreeCAD first starts up, let it know you want to do a new project by going to the upper corner and clicking on File, New, or just click on this box with the little plus sign. The icon might change, but it's always going to be positioned just below File, so click on whatever's there. Our next step is to go to our Workbench uh, drop-down menu. Uh, it'll just say Start Now. Click on that, and then pick the workbench we want to start in, which is the Part Workbench and then click on that. Making boxes is really easy, and one of the reasons it's easy is all boxes are essentially a cube. So click on the cube solid. We're going to want to be able to change some data on the cube, so to get into the data, click on the label. Next, you're going to use that caliper and deck of cards I gave you to find out the width of these cards. So if you haven't used the caliper before, I'm going to use this battery to demonstrate it. Uh, you make sure the caliper says zero when it's fully closed. You do that just by hitting the zero button right there. And then you open it up and you just let whatever you're measuring go inside the two uh, caliper prongs. And you can see this has a width of 24.1 millimeters this way. And if I spin it, it has slightly less width the other way. But that's how a caliper works. So what I want you to do here is uh, measure the cards width from here to here and see what you get and see if you get the same result I get in the next frame. Okay, so I got a width of 66 millimeters, but actually what I got was a width of 65.8 or 9 millimeters, 8 if I squeeze it in a lot, uh, but that's what rounding up's all about. So 60 65.8 is such a small fraction of movement uh, that I just rounded it up to 66 millimeters to make my work easier. So if you got anywhere around 66 in the last step, you got it right. So now the next challenge is use your calipers to measure the depth of the card box. Okay, so the depth, same way, just go to either side and lightly press against the sides. Uh, we don't want to squeeze it. It came to 17.5 for me. I rounded it up to 18, so if you got anywhere and near that, you did it right. Now for the height of our card box, we're not going to take the total. I want you to measure how tall this is and then subtract about 30 millimeters and see what you get. Okay, so measuring this for a total height, I get 91.9. .9, so let's call it 92. And if I subtract 30 from that, I'm going to get 62. And the reason I'm subtracting uh, 30 from it is when we have the box, I want some of the cards to stick out because we're going to make a lid for our box to go on it. Um, and 30 millimeters will allow that much of the card to stick out, basically. Um, we could probably go to 20 millimeters. Maybe that's what I'll do. Why don't you do that as well? We'll go to 72 uh, millimeters for the total height of the bottom of our box and then we can make a 30 millimeter box that's slightly bigger to go over top of that. So that's our plan. Write down the 72 or you don't have to write anything down. I'll tell you what the numbers are in the next steps. Alright, so our cube's still highlighted and we just want to zoom in on the length, width, and height. Here we're going to plug in our numbers. So we had a width of 66 millimeters and we called it depth, but let's call it length here, of 18 millimeters. And then we had a height that we decided we would do of 72 millimeters. So why don't you make those changes now, and we'll go on from there. 
Now with your recent changes, your box is going to be too big to fit in the view screen. So click on this button here uh, to fit everything into the new uh, view. So we're looking at this from a uh, front view and it's showing us this side. So why don't we click on the isometric view icon. Now FreeCAD has a real handy feature right here uh, called the skinning tool which makes any cube into a box. You simply have to click on the part you want to be the opening of the box and then click on the skinning tool. So I'm going to have you do that now. Click on the top of your box so only the top is highlighted in green and then click on your skinning tool. Now it's called the skinning tool because it has essentially made your box uh, a skin that went around it. So it, right now we have a one millimeter skin. You can see it one there. If uh, we ch we're going to change that shortly, but it has added one millimeter to this side, one millimeter to that side, this side, and this side. So your box is essentially bigger. Um, what I want you to do right now is change that to two. So your original box is essentially the air inside, and we've added two millimeters to either side of that and two millimeters onto the bottom. Uh, so let's make some changes to our notes. Uh, we've got 66 plus 2 plus 2 gives us a new width of 70 millimeters. Uh, the depth also adds 4 onto it, so the new depth is 22 millimeters. The height has grown by 2 because we've added a 2 millimeter skin to the bottom. So that's 74 millimeters. So uh, those notes are going to come in handy when we start making the top for our box. So maybe write those numbers down or just keep them in mind. I will remind you later on. Okay, we're done with skinning this box, so go ahead and click OK. To make the lid for our box, we're going to create, uh, click on the square tool again or the cube tool again. Click on the new cube so it's selected and then right click and click on transform. I'm going to roll and have you roll your mouse wheel towards you a little bit just to make everything zoom out. Then grab the red cone and then well just pull it a little bit away just so we're not building this cube inside the other cube. So go ahead and do that. And once you've got that all done, feel free to click OK. OK, so now we can take those numbers that we figured out um, and put them in here. So our new width with the extra skin value added on is 70. And I might just add a 0.1 onto that just so we're not too tight of a fit when we're putting the lid on. So go ahead and enter 70.1 for your width. Now our depth we said was the length. Um, that has grown to 22 millimeters and we're going to add a 0.1 onto that for the same reason. So go ahead and make your length 22.1. And you might remember from the start we wanted to make the lid have a height of 30 millimeters. So I'll enter 30 for height. So you might remember that to use the skin all we have to do is click on the area we want to be skinned and I want you to click on the top. But can you remember the rest of how you skin it? Go ahead and try it now. I'll show you in the next video slide if you can. Okay, so to do a skin, simply click this box. And that's it. We've got a skinned uh, lid uh, that will fit over top of this box. Uh, but before we click it and say OK, let's change this to 2 millimeters as well. And then we can click OK. Now for our tutorials, this is actually part of our drafting section. So I'm going to have you go back to the workbench, uh, click on it, and from the selection of workbenches, click on draft. So the part of um, the draft workbench we're going to use here is for putting in strings, which is this giant S here, creating text strings. So click that. So you'll get this dialog box, and the first thing this dialog box wants to know is where are you want to, going to want to put the string. So we're going to put it on the front face of this box, somewhere around the center. So just click off to the left center. Now, right here we could put the uh, what we want 
for our string, but I'm going to have you leave that default. I'll also have you leave the height as 10. We can change both of those later, and I want to show you how. So what I want you to do right now is just click on these three dots, and I'll show you how on the Linux computers you can find the font file. Clicking on those three dots brings up this file. Uh, what I want you to click on here is this line that says computer. After clicking on computer, click on uh, this uh, slash, which is the root of the computer, and then click open. We're looking for a particular file called the user file, which is this one, USR. Once you've found and clicked on that, you can then click open. Also double clicking it works. That brings us into another selection of files. You want to find the one that says share and click open. This has lots of files, so you might want to click on anything and then hit F on your keyboard. Um, and that'll bring you to the beginning of the Fs. Then you can go and find uh, fonts, the fonts folder, F-O-N-T-S. Uh, click on that so it's highlighted and then click open. Now fonts are text images. Um, all kinds of different ways text images can be done. But for uh, FreeCAD, we need true type. So click on true type and then click open. Now oh, I'm going to have you click the deja vu. Uh, it's no sense wasting time experimenting with some that will or will not work. So click on deja vu and then click open. And then you can click on pretty much anything here. I'm just going to click uh, this bold oblique one, which means it's going to be bold. Everybody knows what that is. And oblique means it's kind of tilted to the side. And then I'm going to click open. I'll have you choose yours and click open once you've got that selected. You won't see anything because we haven't said OK yet. So you got to go back to this dialog box and click on OK. For right now, our font is just a flat bit of wiring. So why don't we make it a little more substantial uh, by going back to our part workbench and seeing if we can extrude it. So to go back to the part workbench, click where it's saying draft right now and go down and click on part. On the part workbench there is this blue thing with an arrow coming out. It's our extrude icon. Click on that. That'll give us this extrude dialog. There's a few things we want to change. First thing I want you to do is go down towards the bottom and click where it says create solid. Do that please. Now the default direction it's going to extrude is up. And luckily for us, that's where we want to go, so we don't have to change anything here. But right here where it says how far we're going to extrude, that's a little extreme to go up 10 millimeters. Let's go up 3, so change that to 3. Now all you got to do is click OK or Apply. Let's click OK. All right, so now to position this on our card box, we're going to use an old friend. Uh, right click where it says extrude now. Just right click on that and say transform. You should be very familiar with transforming by now. There's a whole section on it. Um, but we're going to use the red ball to rotate this 90 degrees. And then we can use uh, the green ball to turn it an additional 90 degrees but on a different angle, different axis. And then you can use the cones to bring it in to the... Uh, so what I first did is I brought it this way onto the thing and I wanted to see it sink in. So let's sink it in one. Each tick is a millimeter. Sink it in one millimeter. There we go. So now it's sunk in one millimeter so it should hold pretty good when we print it. Kind of the red one helps me get it centered from left to right. And the green one helps me get it to the height. Now remember, we're going to be putting a lid on this. So if you're too high, your lid's just going to cover it, or it'll prevent your lid from going in and on. So you want to go down a bit. So somewhere like that. So go ahead, position your text string. Now that you got your text string in place, uh, go ahead and click OK. Now, of course, you do not want this to say default. Um, but before we change it, let's say you wanted more than one line. You wanted maybe two or three lines. That would be simple now. We simply have to right click on extrude and say copy. And then it'll ask us if we want to select all the objects inside the extrude. And we do, so click yes. So why don't you do those two steps? Right click, uh, say copy, and then click on yes when the prompt comes up. 
Okay, now that we've agreed to its terms, uh, we just have to paste now. So right click and then click on paste. Now the second extrude we're, is, needs to be clicked on with a right click and then say transform. And we don't have to do all the positioning we did before because it's already in place. We can just use the uh, cone for green cone for moving up and down on the Z axis and move it into place. And once you like the place it's at, go ahead and click OK. OK, I promised I would show you how to change these. So I want you to go to the first extrude and click on the little arrow on the corner to open it up and then click on the shape string so it's selected. Do that please. So down in your data view, not only do you have the size and some of the things we're used to uh, with other objects, we have the string and then it says default, which is what it's saying right now. But why don't you click on default and change that to your name. So I'm just going to say Ken's with an apostrophe S, yes, you put in your name. And there you have it. It's changed on the model as well. So uh, let's do the same. Come back over to the side on your second extrude. Click on the arrow to open that up. Click on its shape string and change the default text uh, to say card box. Now that's what I'm going to do. You can make these boxes say whatever you like. Uh, but mine now is going to say Ken's card box. Well, at least it will as soon as I hit enter. There we go. I had to, it wasn't changing. I had to right click on it, say transform and OK, and then it changed after that. Um, that's kind of a glitch in this FreeCAD 18 version that I've noticed. Some things you won't take, but they do take after you enter a transform. But go ahead and make that change so that your two lines say what they want, you want them to say. One last note, um, you might find that you have to enter transform on either of the lines once again just to get everything uh, centered because of course the new text uh, is not the same length as the old text. Once you have that done, uh, you're done this tutorial. You can now refer to your tutorials on exporting, saving, and using Slicer uh, to finish this project.